Good morning, Wabash. I would like to welcome all of you to this year's Monon Bell Chapel. Today, our speakers are football captains Brock Heffron, Ike James, Jake Slager, Brandon Yagi, Artie Akiwa, and head coach Don Morrell. On Saturday, we, as one Wabash, will comp be competing for a prize treasured by all those who are associated to our college. I would now like to welcome all guests to campus today. It is now my distinct honor to welcome our most important guest to the chapel. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Monon Bell. Without any further ado, please welcome our speakers, led by Artie Kiwa and followed by each one without any further introduction. Good morning, Wabash. Before I begin, I figured I might as well try to get everybody a little juiced up. Um, so we're going to do a couple quick little Ric Flair chants. So uh, if the football team can help me out, we'll do one to kind of demonstrate, and then we'll do one with everybody all together. So for the football guys and anybody who knows what's going on here, can I get two claps and a Ric Flair? Woo! All right, now all together. Can I get two claps and a Ric Flair? Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, so I just want to start off by saying thank you for all of you here today and supporting us and keeping this tradition alive. I'd also like to thank all of my coaches, fellow captains, and teammates for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today. I feel very blessed to have known Wabash for more than just the past four years. As a kid, my parents would always take me to the Wabash football games. <laughs> However, the one game we never missed was the Bell game. I don't exactly remember my first Bell game, but there is one in particular that really opened my eyes to the Wabash Brotherhood. I was probably around eight or nine years old, but this was the first time my parents allowed me to wake up early and set up the tailgate with my dad and his Pledge Brothers. So for the first time, I got up early, packed the coolers, and loaded the trucks with firewood, and we all headed to Green Castle. I can vividly remember sitting around sitting around a fire, eating a breakfast burrito, when one of my dad's pledge brothers carried over this big red cooler. Upon seeing this cooler, my dad and all of his friends gave out a loud laugh or began to shake their heads. Before I could figure out what was going on, my dad's friend reached into his cooler and pulled out a package of hot dogs. Little did I know, these weren't just any regular hot dogs. They were Danny dogs. And as I would learn later that day, Danny dogs aren't for eating. They're for throwing. <laughs> so it wasn't too long until I was graced with the sight of a grown man rifling cold hot dogs at the heads of DePauw fans walking by. Yeah, and this is a sight, this is a sight I will never forget, trust me. And as I continued to watch in disbelief, one of the other kids at the tailgate gave me a little nudge and showed me all of the Danny dogs he stole out of the cooler. So off we went, Danny dogs in hand, until we found a great, a great hiding place in some trees right on the outside of the Wabash tailgate. 
Now, if you were to watch any of my film from playing in high school, you would know why I play defense. I can't hit the broad side of a barn with a football. But let me tell you, I can throw a vicious Danny dog. As me and my new friend laughed and threw our hot dogs at innocent people, we soon ran out. I gave out a deep sigh and turned to walk away, and that was until I noticed my little friend went and walked the opposite direction, unscrewing the top of his Gatorade bottle. I stood in shock as I watched this kid heave a full blue Gatorade at the back of an unsuspecting DePaw fan. As you could imagine, he was pretty pissed. In fact, he chased us back through the trees and into the Wabash tailgate. Except he didn't catch us because almost immediately, our Gatorade-soaked friend was being apprehended by a whole squad of Wabash men. And my new friend and I made it back safely to my family's tailgate. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so why is it I tell you this story? I tell you this story because it was the first time I began to see Wabash as something more than just a football game. And at some point, oh, I'm sorry. Totally, um, yeah, I began to see it as a brotherhood of both men and women who support one another, regardless of how well we actually know each other. But aside from needing help that one day in Greencastle, I found myself in desperate need throughout the years of my time, or throughout my years here. And at some point, every single one of you in this room has been there for me, whether it be my teammates on or off the field, professors helping me achieve my academic goals, coaches forging me into the man I am today, or any of you sitting here listening to me. In one way or another, you have had my back, and you can count on me having yours on the field on Saturday. Now let's go get ourselves a win. Ding, ding. Good morning, Wabash. As you can imagine, this week at Wabash is unlike anything else most of us have ever encountered before. I would have never guessed, standing here today, that I would be in the position that I am right now. Standing here with all of you, being a part of a team, and the greatest tradition that our state has to offer. It's an experience that I will never forget. This week, more than any other, we are one Wabash. We are unlike anyone else. We are a brotherhood. We are tough. We have grit, and most of all, we have the bell. As we prepare to step on the field this Saturday, we will approach this game with one thing in mind, the team, the team, and the team. Wabash is not just a place to go to college, it's a lifestyle. When we play, we play for Wabash, everything it is and everything it ever has been. Our competition solely cares about themselves. I saw firsthand my freshman year that losing the bell strikes Wabash at the heart. At that moment, I realized how serious this was for the players, students, alums, and everyone that has ever called Wabash home. From then on, I knew that I would do everything in my power to fulfill my part on this team. As a captain of this team, I promise to all in this room and every Wabash alum that we will be prepared, we will be dialed in, and we will bring the intensity. Most importantly, we will win again. We all have a part to play to keep the bell at home. Ding, ding. Good morning, Wabash. I would like to start off today by uh, thanking the time to thank, number one, my teammates for electing me as one of your leaders this season and presenting me the opportunity to lead you in the battle each weekend. I'd like to thank the captains for not only being our leaders we rely on most on the field, but for being the role models and how they carry themselves off the field as well. I'd also like to thank all my coaches for all the time and sacrifice that they get and efforts towards not working to create the best football players but also the best men that Wabash can present to us today. And also for giving me the opportunity to represent this historic program each and every Saturday. 
Lastly, I'd like to thank my family, most exclusively my uh, parents, for always selflessly sacrificing to support me in everything I need, and my uh, siblings for being my biggest fans ever since the beginning. Without you all, I wouldn't be the man I am today. This team came into the 2019 season with a specific set of goals in mind. Number one is always to win the Bell game, to win a conference championship, to defend the Holland and go undefeated on our home turf, and to go to the playoffs and play for a national championship. Very lofty goals for a team that, though is talented, lost a lot of experience in key areas from a season ago. The Wabash football program is one of the oldest and winningest programs in college football history. And with that comes an expectation that is held by very few other programs in the country. An expectation that also comes from the prestige and history that Wabash College holds. As Wabash men, we expect nothing less. This place is extremely difficult, but like every other challenge we face on a day-to-day -day basis, just because something is difficult does not change the expectation of excellence we bestowed upon ourselves. To be a successful football team, like anything else in life, is a process. No one team in the history of sports has ever won a championship in one day. Likewise, no one person has ever became a successful person after just one day. Through my experiences, not only on the football field, but through my su any successes in life I may have achieved, nothing has ever just happened. Success is always earned. Success requires an immense amount of focus and dedication and the discipline to ignore adversity and attack it even when it seems insurmountable and the only thing keeping somebody from attaining what they want to achieve. The difference between being successful and unsuccessful is the ability to stare adversity directly into the face and to have resiliency to attack and overcome it by making whatever sacrifice and dedication necessary to achieve the end goal. As a football team, we can relate to working the process to obtain our goals in our everyday work. We instilled the motto to trust in the process. For every little thing we do on our team builds peace, uh, work, oh, sorry. Everything we do for our team works piece by piece as we work towards the end of the end goal we set for ourselves. Our other motto, the team, the team, the team, is the complete mindset of how we attack our goals daily. It reminds us that every step of the process that takes place to achieve our goal is for the success of the team and that everybody on the team has a specific job they do that is a little piece that correlates to the total success of the team. It also drives us to be our best because it's the team that is counting on each member to do its individual part. The 2019 Wabash College football season has been a season that we will never forget. It has been a season where we have experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. This team has experienced the feeling of being picked as a true contender while having an equal amount of doubt bestowed upon us just as quickly as all the hype originally was brought upon us. Only to work ourselves back to where we are today. All this took hard work, discipline, and selflessness from each member of this team in order to fulfill our journey to meet our end goal. When adversity struck, rather than falling apart because things were hard, we embraced it. We learned from our losses and came right back to work. We held each other accountable and worked relentlessly each day for one sole purpose, to benefit the team. And because of this, our process has taken this season a full circle. Look from where we started to where we are now, from experiencing devastating failure up in Wisconsin, to winning some very big games and then relinquishing first place midway through the season in a really bad game to rallying back and staying the course through all the madness of our schedule to find ourselves where we are right now, on top of the conference, with the chance to solidify our destiny and move forward with our journey into the biggest game of the year. It really just doesn't get much better than this. Though all this is great, we must keep in mind that everything happens for a reason. Every bit of success we have tasted has been a result of our failures and a result of trusting the process we set upon ourselves in order to achieve the high expectations that come from playing Wabash football. When given the opportunity to play at Wabash, no matter what season, how good the opponent is, or the situation the team is put into, the expectation for the last regular season game every November remains the same. And as we have time and time again, we will continue to go along as Wabash men have for generations. Because in the end, we know that just like everything in life, nothing ever just happens. Success is earned and not given. 
as Wabash men, we take this to heart because no matter how hard adversity gets, we will always fight and overcome because it is the only way that Wabash men have ever attacked adversity. The res- In the end, no matter what, Wabash always fights. And no matter what Monon Madness happens on that field this weekend, the resilience to adversity that has been instilled in this team and correlated to its success will be the reason Wabash is the only team standing in the end. Let's go get it, guys. Ding, ding. Good morning, Wabash. Good morning, Rob. Man, that just feels so good. <laughs> what an incredible honor it is to be standing here in front of you today for one of the best traditions we have on campus. I want to say thank you to my family, friends, and all the countless faculty that have left an everlasting impression on me. Your influence has created me into who I am today. I often receive the question, is Wabash worth it? And I hope through the next couple of minutes, I'm able to answer just that. Through the years, there are a couple of great lessons I have learned through the time I've been here. First, should not buy a fitted suit then decide to put on 20 pounds. <laughs> Second, the combined efforts of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump could not pull off a bell heist. And third, most importantly, what Wabash Always Fights truly means. Wabash Always Fights on the football field looks like being down 17 points with only four minutes left in the fourth quarter to come back and win on a 75-yard scoop and score in overtime. Looks like having everything possible go wrong in a football game to come back and beat Albion College in overtime to begin our 2016 season. Looks like being down seven points with under six minutes left to play in the 2017 Bell game to cause a fumble, capitalize and score a touchdown, and then get the two-point conversion. It looks like losing a brother, being expected to crumble, not only as a team, but as a community, to only rise as one Wabash and do what nobody expected, to raise our level as a community with support and bring home a conference championship. It looks like being picked to win conference and then lose our opening game this year, to then claw our way back into the position we are today just conference champs. Wabash always fights in the classroom. Looks like professors challenging our perspective, challenging our mental capacity to think beyond what is immediately there. Looks like constant late nights of studying and writing papers to be challenged then to do even better. We're challenged every day to do better, study better, write better, speak better. We're challenged to be better in every facet possible. Little do we know, we are training our minds to constantly do better and continually improve, to raise our expectations and reflect harder on ourselves, to look in the mirror and evaluate our own performance. We're forced to ask ourselves, what do you stand for? When people look at you, do they think excuses? When people look at you, do they think victory? When people look at you, do they think that's the person that's gonna give me everything they got, not just on some days, but on every single day, and it's not gonna be predicated upon whether they feel like it or not. Because we all know, if we only worked on the days we felt like it, none of us would get much accomplished. And this is what makes us so special. This recognition that even in the cold, dark, and miserable, the days when nobody wants to be there, we will be. Because that is what Wabash has trained us to do. Wabash always fights is a definition of a Wabash man. We win because we strive to outwork each other each and every day. We prepare ourselves to succeed no matter the circumstance. This game is more than a battle of a 300 pound bell. It's a battle between two ways of life. The school down south mocks us, mocks our culture, mocks our community. DePaul never quits, they say. That's the motto of complacency. The motto of somebody justifying average performance. This game is about proving our way is better than their way. It's about proving that all the work we have put in is worth it. It's about showing our community as one is far more dedicated, is far stronger, and is far superior than whatever they preach down south. And I sure hope they don't quit on Saturday so we can continue to beat the hell out of them in front of the few fans they'll have left in the stands. Thank you.
Good morning, Wabash. First, I'd like to start off with some thank yous. First, to my family for making me who I am today, to my teammates for giving me this opportunity to be up here, and to my coaches for sacrificing the times with their families to shape this entire team into the men that we've all become. And lastly, to this entire campus for the endless support, no matter what, that you always give to us. It's a funny process being a transfer student because unlike what you experience as a freshman on your first day of camp, you think you already know how things are supposed to go. Uh, I remember my first day when I showed up on campus and I thought I knew all that I needed to know about college and college football, which definitely was not the case. For those of you who don't know, I came from a school that no longer exists and when I was there we lost every game by 10 million points, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, but when I got here, it didn't take long for me to realize that there was no other school that you can compare this place to. The campus, the people, the brotherhood, the football, the never-ending amounts of homework that I know we all look forward to every night. But as my first semester here was winding down, this mystical thing that we all know as the Bell Game was upon us, and I didn't quite understand all the hype and all the hate for DePaul, and I couldn't quite wrap my mind around the fact that people were so hell-bent on getting this Bell back from the Tigers. To me, it was another game, so obviously I wanted to win. It was on TV and played in front of thousands of people, so I was excited. But I felt like I was hating DePaul just because that's what I was supposed to do. But when we drove down south and took the bell back with us when we left, it all clicked for me, everything. This, camp it, this campus is different when the bell is at home in Crawfordsville. The campus is complete with the Monon Bell sitting above the Allen Center doors. This is because the bell, at its very core, is the heart of this campus. And this constant, nonstop dinging is the pulse that keeps that heart beating. Wabash is a better place when we have the bell in our possession, and I think that whether you're a past or present member of this Wabash family, this is something that we can all agree upon. The people here are from all different backgrounds, upbringings, and come from all different aspects of life. But we are all come here for a reason, and that is to be different. And when the bell is ringing, we know we can say that we are different. We are tough, gritty, blue-collar people, and we always fight. So when we get to put it all on the line against those entitled soft dannies down south, we can leave there knowing that we are better than them. The tradition makes sense now. I now know why the bell is important. It stands for so much more than the winning of a football game. It's winning in everything. Like Coach Morrell has always told us since last week, we are conference champions. <laughs> we, are <laughs> we are playing a playoff game next week, and those things are two things that win or lose Saturday are already in existence. But if we lose the bell, none of this really means anything, not because we lost the game, but because we'd be letting down this entire campus and the entire Wabash community. That is who we play for, and that is our why. So come Saturday, I'm 100% confident that after the game comes to an end, it's going to be a long, sleepless night for everybody on this campus. Not because we failed to handle business, but it's pretty hard to sleep when all you hear is ding, ding. Thank you. Good morning, Wabash. A few thank yous. One, uh, how about the captains here? They've done a great job. First of all, I'd like to thank the Sphinx Club for all they do every day on this campus and the work they put in. Uh, at this time, I'd love for my staff to please stand and be recognized. That is a uh, tireless group of workers. They are outstanding fathers, they're outstanding husbands, and they're outstanding coaches, and I'm proud to work with them every day. Um, I'd like to thank President Hess for his bold leadership on the new stadium project, which will be ready by next season. I'd like to thank my boss, Matt Tanney, for the clear direction he has set for the athletics department. And I'd like to thank the entire Wabash community for the support we enjoy every day, not just every Saturday, but every day uh, of the year uh, with their enthusiasm for Wabash football. I need...
I need to recognize the tremendous uh, season our fellow fall sports have had. We are uh, incredibly proud of our cross country and soccer teams. There's a uh, story, uh, this, is, this is about tough things or hard things, if you will, and we, we've had a hard season, but there's a story up in heaven, uh, God is making dinner uh, for uh, Mother Teresa, and it's Mother Teresa has just died, and it's her first night in heaven, and that night they kind of have some canned spaghetti, and then the next night, she shows up for dinner, and it's some leftover meatloaf. And uh, before the third dinner, she says, Heavenly Father, I, I just thought once you got to heaven, every meal would be an incredible banquet, and we've had canned spaghetti and leftover meatloaf. And God says, uh, Sister, it's, it's just not any fun when you're only cooking for two people. Relax, enjoy, it's just a joke. <laughs> All right, so wherever, wherever Nick Hammond is, what, what, what they're saying, Nick, is it's really hard to get into heaven. There are only two people. I need to, <laughs> I got to help Hammond. <laughs> so what we've done this year is, is really challenging and be, and also in my thank you, speaking of tough things, I want to thank the faculty, because as we all know, they really back off during Bell Week on the homework, huh, guys? <laughs> that, that too was a joke, Nick. <laughs> uh, at other schools, they would be celebrating right now. The football team won a conference title. The football team's going to the playoffs. Um, but Wabash is a little weird, and we're proud of it. Um, we take this stuff serious, and now it is the biggest game of the year. So in essence, we do value the Bell game more than a conference title. We value it more uh, than a highly coveted spot in the playoffs. The Bell game is the essence of Wabash, and not just Wabash football, Wabash, the community, and the things we stand for. You know, around here, we use words all the time like tradition, work ethic, integrity, the gentleman's rule, and they really do mean something. They really do. This doesn't happen on other campuses. So this is the week where we celebrate who we are and our efforts against an opponent who has different values than we do. And uh, we take this stuff very, very serious. It's my greatest hope that we put these words, work ethic, integrity, discipline, all these words we use into action this Saturday, and we bring the bell back to Wabash. Ding, ding. Got a few announcements before we go today. See you all at Chadwick Court tonight at 7 p.m. as our basketball team opens their season against Center College. The wrestling team will be home tomorrow night for a match against Manchester at 7 p.m. Good luck to the cross country team, as this Saturday they will be competing in the NCAA Great Lakes Regional. Finally, I will see you all this Saturday afternoon in Greencastle at 1.07 p.m. as the 126th Monon Bell Classic will kick off. Now please rise and sing Old Wall Band.